In 10 minutes or less, I'm going to go over how you can become a pharmacist the smart way. All right. If you don't know, I'm a licensed pharmacist and I have been for over three years now. Okay. I graduated in 2021 from the University of Florida College of Pharmacy. And I was thinking about this episode because recently I've been getting a lot of messages in my DM about, should I still be a pharmacist? How should I go about being a pharmacist? What do you recommend? So I figured I'd go ahead and create an episode revolving all around this to help you all that are thinking about becoming a pharmacist. So reflecting back on my four years of grad school, if I had to do it all over again, this is exactly what I would do. So I highly recommend you tune into this full episode and it's going to be brief and quick and I'm going to go right to the point. All right. If you know me, no fluff. So to start off for this episode of Capsarx podcast, the number one thing that you need to do is you need to look up all the different pharmacy schools that accept an AA degree, an associate degree, the ones that don't accept a bachelor. What might be shocking to you is that there's some university, some college of pharmacy that actually accept an associate's degree. The reason why you want to do that is you want to figure out all the ones that accept just an associate's degree. And what you want to do after that, this is your number two goal, is to go ahead and figure out which courses you need to complete. Because the earlier you can become a pharmacist, the earlier you're able to start bringing in income, and the earlier you get to start working your dream job. How awesome is that? I'm telling you, I graduated when I was probably about 28 or 29. 28. I think I was 28. But I graduated when I was 28. But I had classmates that were graduating when they were like 24 or 25. They were way younger than me. And that's because they didn't do four years for their bachelor's. They just went in, did their AA, and got, went right into pharmacy school. And I'll give you a quick tip, quick little hint. The University of Florida is one of those colleges of pharmacy that accept people with an AA. And number one. Do your research, figure out which schools accept people with an AA. Number two, figure out which courses you need to take. Because if you're in high school and you really want to be a pharmacist, guess what you can do? You can sign up for dual enrollment and start taking those courses. Start taking those classes. You may not even have to go to college to get the AA. You might be able to actually finish it while you're still in high school. So that's something that I would do. Number three, once you figure out those different schools that, that accept an AA and you figure out their requirement, I would make sure to go and take those courses, whether it's at a small college or through dual enrollment. If you're already in college, just go to a small school that's close to home. You don't have to pay too much in tuition or rent, something cheap, state school, not private, nothing expensive, because you're going to have a lot of student loans when you go to that pharmacy degree. So you don't want to go through that in your undergrad. Try to make undergrad as cheap as possible and get through it as quick as possible. Okay. Multi your student loans, you want that to be your graduate loan, not your undergrad loan. So you're going to go ahead and take those courses. It might be like organic chemistry. It might be physics. Those different things, you're going to take those at a state school and something that is very, very cheap. Okay. So number four, after doing that, you're going to go ahead and apply. You're going to apply to all these different pharmacy schools that accept someone with an AA. But when you apply to them, you want to make sure that they are public schools. A lot of these private schools are very, very expensive. And the reason why I'm going to go against the grain, and I'm probably going to strike some nerves, that I'm not going to recommend a lot of these private universities is because now with the interest rate and how much it costs for you to go to school, it's ridiculous. I'm talking, I know pharmacists that are coming out with over two hundred to $300,000 of student loan debt. Like, that's like position level student loan debt. And that is not okay with like a 10 to 15% interest rate because they had to take private student loan because they went to a private school. We're not doing that. Look for only the state schools and you're going to apply for those because you want to be strategic. You want to be smart. You want to get your degree, your AA degree as fast as possible. And you want to go to the cheapest school that is still a great institution. So you're able to look it up and be able to see the rankings of the top pharmacist schools of the nation. And so you want to go to the best one that's a public school and preferably within your state because it's going to be cheaper for in-state tuition than it is if you're an out-of-state person going in for that graduate school. And so you're going to do that and then you're going to go ahead and get accepted into pharmacy school and you're going to go through those four years the best that you can. You're going to be focused on pharmacy school. You're going to be focused on getting a couple internships to help you with your goal. And last but not least, you need to also focus on networking. So that's the smart way to become a pharmacist. 
If you need animal assistance, or if you're thinking about becoming a pharmacist and you're not sure if this is the right career path for you, and then by all means, DM me. Just shoot me a message. And if you haven't yet, please comment, like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And leave a comment down below if you like this episode or if you want more insight on how you can become a pharmacist. And if you have any tips that could help people who are interested in becoming a pharmacist to become one as quick as possible and as cheap as possible. Thank you so much, guys, for listening. If you need anything, I'm not hard to find. At new underscore Capsarx podcast on all platforms.